let me discuss problem number four so we have in here problem number four we will copy now in here we have a uh, let a belong to r m by n and b belong to r of n dimension so that exactly one of the following system has a solution system one ax equal to b and system two we have a transpose y equal to zero comma b transpose y equal to one now for the following data validate the above result in example validate only one of the two system is visible in here we see that uh, it has a correlation between system 1 and system 2 if we can prove whether the system 1 has a solution we will know exactly where that the system 2 will not have the solution because uh, the correlation uh, is the opposite for the system 1 and system 2 it's such a Verkas lemma theorem we can prove from the scratch and now we will try to prove uh, by converting this equation to the following equation we have learned before which is Verkas lemma now we see the Verkas lemma theorem in here we have a convex set that we try to copy for the Verkas lemma theorem and here so then try to convert the equation in here so in here we know that In here, system 2. System 2 is parated. A transpose y equal to 0 and B transpose y equal to y. So, it's almost similar with uh, the form of system 1 because it, it is uh, separated. So, what we will do transpose y equal to 0 comma p transpose y equal to 1 let we have a value of s uh, for the scalar value which is not 0 not equal to 0 we can see it will seem that s multiply with i transpose y also same with like this zero comma in here is same p transpose y equal to y in here we multiply both side left hand side and right hand side with the s so if we multiply with s value the value uh, p transpose y is 1 it's always greater than 0 we can write in here so that p transpose y is always greater than 0 it will have the same notation with system 1 in the Verkas lemma in here Right, so how about to change a trans a x less than equal to zero? We know that a transpose y in here we have a same. Uh, so in here we have a same value a transpose y. It will have s multiplied with zero. So by configuration this value.
will have a transpose y a transpose y equal to zero can be written by for the equality form here can be written by two equation which is minus a transpose y less than equal to zero and a transpose y equal less than equal than zero so if we plot this value we can transform the e and a transpose it's like the equation before in here is a x e less than zero let's see that we can have minus a and it is a why this is why less than zero so it will be same with system one similar with system one in Ferkas Lemma. So by using this equation, we try to get the value from Ferkas Lemma using system 2. And if we convert the system 2 to be the system 1 in the question, so we prove that it has a solution in only one set whether it is uh, system one or system two system one system two in here for lemma we have a transpose y equal to c and y greater than equal to zero so in here we have a y is x y in here is x so in here y will be x the transformation we will have A minus A. Suppose we have a variable zeta equal to P with a zeta value is greater than zero. We can write it the variable A zeta minus A zeta two. This is zeta one and zeta two equal to p vector in here so we have a equal to zeta 1 minus zeta 2 equal to p which we can consider is as x so a x a matrix x in here equal to p with x is belong to r so we have converted from Ferkas lemma system to become poison system one system one in here so it's proof
we have already proved for the AX in here for the system Verkas Lemma System 2 which will be convert to the question for question in system 1 so it is proof not from the scratch proof by Verkas Lemma Theorem Alright, let us see problem number four. So, problem number four is about Farkas lemma. So, it gave us two systems. Uh, system number one is AX equals to B, and system two is what uh, A transpose Y uh, equals to zero vector and b transpose y equals to one vector sorry it's a scalar huh? b transpose y is just one and uh, yeah a belongs the, the dimension is m by n b is n vector uh, b should be uh, m vector so that should be that's a typo right b is m vector in the question it says uh, n but it should be m so a belongs to r m by n huh and b belongs to r m okay, in, in the homework question it was written there n but that is a type it cannot be n it should be m okay so how to prove these things well you can start from scratch like the Farkas lemma or you can show things are similar you, you try to modify this to, to create systems that are similar to Farkas Lemma. So if you go back to the Farkas Lemma, let me see the slides. Where are the slides? Yeah. Uh, the Farkas theorem says something like this. Yeah, here it is. Let me just copy this from here. All right. So that's best here. So this is what the Farkas uh, theorem is. So I have two options, either to prove completely from scratch or use the Farkas um, system. And of course, I will go with the easy option, which is to use the Farkas system as is. So I would like to show one of the system to one of the existing systems, and then the corresponding other system will be corresponding other system here. Okay. All right, so now, um how to proceed uh, ax equals to b did anybody try this by the way how many have you tried it let me ask this question uh, how did you prove the the, the part here uh, s1 s2 are alternating systems proved it but uh, we don't know it is but how did you prove it did you use the farkas lemma or you proved from scratch from scratch, doctor. Oh, okay. Anybody try to use Farkas lemma? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Doctor, I use I use the. Uh, the data that's given in the, in the question. Yeah, that was just to validate that what we have just proved is, is correct or not. Uh, but just to show that system one, system two are, you know, only one of them can have a solution. Nobody showed, how many proved from scratch? Or how many proved actually this one? Only one? Okay, that is a uh, bit strange. I'm not sure why uh, you guys didn't 
prove this part. Uh, X equals to B, A transpose by. Of course, now th there is a data given to you, matrix A, matrix B. And uh, for this, you will show that for the data, that if one of the system has a solution, the other one is infeasible. But that is for that given data. But what about in general? I mean, you guys did, did, couldn't prove it because it was difficult, or you didn't even thought that you need to prove that? I didn't know that uh, need to be both because if I show just one one yeah. example, that's me. No, one ex so for for disproving uh, one example is enough to disprove uh, to to prove things. Uh, you have to have a full uh, you know the proof, I and mean, you cannot just prove through an example. You can disprove through an example, but to prove it should be a rigorous. Yes. Okay, so and if you have not tried it, then me going over it is just like class, you know. You never you never have any questions then why this happened, why that happened. Uh so I will leave it uh, for now. Uh, try to see. Uh, you can prove it di directly, like you know, one of the students tried, or you can try to prove it through Fergus. It's up to you. But at least try, and then maybe we can discuss it quickly at the end of the of the class. What What do you guys say? Because if I just t tell it now how to solve, it will be just like class lecture. You will not see why. Uh, we did. The, uh, you'll not see the difficulty. Uh, just uh, do you guys want to try, or you want to just uh, let it? What what's your call? Uh, yes, doctor. I tried, but uh, I couldn't get to the results. And uh, I think if we'll have some more time, inshallah, by by the class on Monday, we will have something to discuss. So it's better to give time according. Uh, that's my suggestion. OK, so let us uh, keep this into the class uh, because you know such uh, theorems which have two systems, uh, proving this is very uh, useful for for, uh, you know, for in general. This is something that will come up a, a lot in, in uh, optimization. So I, I will leave it and try this and then on the class on, on Monday. Uh, I can go over it again. Doctor. Yes, doctor for the given data. Uh, how would we prove that uh, like okay. exactly one of them? OK, so for the given data. Um, uh, again, just to uh, let's assume that we showed this, prove this. Then what is the given data? The given data is like this uh, one, two, one, 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 zero. OK, and the other one is zero, one. Uh, okay, this vector. And uh, B is strictly greater than zero. I don't know why this is needed, uh, but I think this is all I need. So um, we can have different uh, ways to look at it. Uh, now let us see system one. What is system one? System one is like uh, row space. Okay. Uh, so, or you can say, for example, um, A x equals to B. Okay. So I can look at it in two different styles. I can say rows of A multiplied by X or columns of A, but then here X has nothing. So I could say, uh, let us write it, AX equals to B. Okay, so AX equals to B is written like this. How uh, X1 plus X2 plus X3 equals to zero and 2X1 plus X2 equals to one. OK, this is AX equals to B, correct? Yes, yes no? Sir. OK, yes, sir. now let us write. Uh, um, yeah. A transpose Y equals to zero. So A transpose Y, it means like this. Uh, A transpose, again, you can write it here, just to make sure we don't make a mistake. A transpose is 1, 2, 1, 1, 1, 0. So A transpose Y will be like this, Y1 plus 2, Y2 equals to 0. 
y1 plus y2 equals to 0 and y1 equals to 0. Okay, and b transpose y equals to 1 will look like y2, 0 y1 is gone, y2 equals to 1. Okay, yes, b transpose y1, b transpose y equals to 1 means y2 equals system 2, uh, the system 2 with this given data, y1 equals to 0, y2 equals to 1, it, it turns out to be a specific system. So y2 equals to 1, y1 equals to 0. That means this condition is not satisfied, right? You see, y2 yes. equals to 1, this is not satisfied. Similarly, this is also not satisfied, right? That implies what this system is empty. So that means there should be something here that is feasible, and provided the proof uh, was, was done. So let us see if we can find a feasible solution here. Um, uh, uh, can you find a feasible solution here? If I make x1 yes, as yes, 0, yes. x2 as 1, x3 as minus 1. For example, this is a feasible solution, uh, right? Uh, there are many, by the way, feasible solutions, but this is one of the feasible solutions, right? Yes, no? Yes, no. Yeah. So this shows that only one of them can have a feasible solution for this specific case. But is it true in general? And this is what the proof is. In general, uh, it would be the case. That... Uh, X1 must be minus 1. So you can have many. Uh, uh, you can have many solutions. I believe this is also fine because this will be zero. Here I will have one, one minus one zero. So this is also feasible. It could be, there could be many feasible solutions. Uh, for example, what do you have in mind, Osama? For minus one, one mm -hmm. is zero. Minus one, no, no. One zero. Uh, it's not feasible, Doctor. One minus one and zero should be feasible. Yeah, one minus yes. one zero could be the case, huh? one minus one zero. Okay, so you have, you'll have many, by the way, not just one solution, you'll have many, and here you said, so two, uh, in fact, you can have your like- Minus one, two, zero, minus two. Minus plus beta, minus beta zero, or uh, lambda minus zero, lambda minus lambda, here you go, you got two infinitely many solutions for every value of lambda, which is, uh, there you will get the, the solutions for every value of beta you will get so you'll get many solutions but all we need to show is that it is feasible feasible yani just show one point that's enough okay okay so that is for uh, uh excuse me doctor can we use yes. uh, the reasoning to prove this in general like uh, we are given that b transpose y in the system two uh, taking system to b transpose y is one which is clear that neither b and neither y can be zero and in a transpose y in the same provided system, it's pretty clear that yeah yeah so b transpose y equals to one implies that uh, neither of them is zero uh, that is correct yes. and and in the system two a transpose y a should be zero because y is not zero Okay. And uh, if this is the case, then system one cannot be true because we have already seen that B is not equal to zero. And above, if A is zero, then how can something multiplied by zero be equal, be equal to, be not equal to zero? Like B is not zero, we have already seen that. If system two is uh, true. And why is also in system one? Like yeah. The only catch here is that when you say A transpose Y equals to zero, uh, if y is not zero, that doesn't mean a should be zero. Okay, that is the only catch in your uh, argument. Any a transpose y could be zero, and both a and y may not be zero. Uh, yes, correct. Sorry. So that is the only catch. Correct. But otherwise, you know, the, the idea is strong. But this is the only catch, and of course, you can prove this uh, still by by little bit modification on your style. But this is the proof from scratch. And you have a choice, like I said, you can prove from scratch or you can prove through system one, system two, existing forecast, or even you can pick any of them and it will work. Okay, but try this yeah, uh, and, and uh, you know, in yes, the class, you can discuss it, okay? 
and uh, uh, maybe then uh, we can see from both styles from proof from scratch and proof from one of the existing systems. Okay, thank you. All right, so now 